I like to say that I'm like one of your biggest fans. I really love your work. And I would like to know what kind of music you listened to growing up and what influenced you, especially when you were writing your latest album. Everything we've ever heard has influenced us, probably. <clears throat> we, uh, we grew up with 70s music, because, you know, that's when we were young. And yeah. um, we still love that music, Fleetwood Mac, the Eagles. Yeah. And everything, like the 80s music, too, influenced us in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we were probably too young to really get into the 60s music because we were born in 68 and right. 60, when mm -hmm. we were in 69. 69. So, yeah. you know, 70s music was a big influence, like Boogie Oogie Oogie and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> disco, Boogie Oogie yeah. Disco, yeah. It's true. And what about your own parents' music? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was always playing. Sort of like a... Uh, subliminal thing, you know. Right. I mean, so right. it's always playing, just That's always we, around. Yeah, we love yeah. harmony so much, and I think because we heard it, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, so much and so often in our in our lives growing mm -hmm. up, that you really, really obviously yes. incorporated that so much. We have, we have a deep love for it. Yeah. From Queens, New York, Rachel <laughs> is waiting to talk to Wilson Phillips. Rachel, what's your question tonight? Hi, Martha Carney, China, and Wendy. Hello. Hi. She did it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you're a group and you work together, do you ever feel you have to compete against or with each other singing and writing-wise? Hmm. <laughs> no. <clears throat> we, um, we share lead vocals and um, because we, all, we feel that we all three have a different sound and a uh, unique uh, thing to offer. And um, we know that <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> the combination of the three of us um, is what makes this group, and, what in, and that is the sound of the group. And in writing, um, we all contribute to the writing process, you know. We all are special at, and good at certain things, but, um, but we all, it's definitely a collaborative effort. It's really funny because, you know, we'll hear a track to a song and we'll know just by listening to the track who should sing it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just, it's very obvious. Mm -hmm. So it always works out. It just all falls together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got Marlene who's on the phone. She's calling from Norwalk, Ohio tonight with a question for Wilson Phillips. Go ahead, Marlene. Yes, first off, I'd like to say that my husband, Tim, and I love your music. Thank you. Thanks. And my question is, with your parents all being major stars and them having seen the downside of this business, did they ever try to encourage any of you to get into another profession? No, they really didn't. They didn't try to dissuade us against this at all um, because they knew that we knew what to watch out for in terms of the downfalls of the business. And um, they knew that there was always going to pe be people being father fatherly figures around us anyway, mm -hmm. so we wouldn't, you know, get into trouble. Um, yeah. So. Also, I think that, you know, when you have the love of music in your heart, there's no way that, you know, even if somebody were to tell you that you shouldn't do it, that mm -hmm. you, you know, would decide against it, because it's, it's such a deep love. It's just something that, that you nothing, had to do. Nothing can steer you away from it. Yeah. No. Miami, Florida has got Elizabeth, who is waiting right now on the phone. Elizabeth, go ahead. Now's your time. Hi. First Hi. of all, I want to say my friend Melissa and I got to meet the three of you when you were down here for a radio station birthday party at the airport. <laughs> and hopefully, Carney, you got the pictures that I mailed to you. Did and I? I just want to say you're three of the sweetest people I've ever met. Oh, Thanks. that's so nice. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, my question is, it's been said that to write a good love song, you have to have had your heart broken. With songs like Over and Over, Release Me, and You're in Love, all touching on the negative aspect of love, do you find this to be a valid statement? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Partially, yeah. Yeah. In to, a way. To feel the emotion in the song, to write about how you're feeling hurt, I think you have to know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. Or at least see people that have been hurt in your right. life. So, yeah, I think it's very valid. Well, thank you very much for your question. And we're going to take a Bye. break, and we're going to come back with a whole lot more calls. We have Wilson Phillips here in the studio. It's Rockline on MTV, and we will be right back. Let's see you. I almost brought it. Call us up. You've got a question for Wilson Phillips. Our toll-free number is 1-800-344-ROCK. That's 1-800-344-7625. Chani, you were mentioning to me that you're about to start writing for your second album. So how does the writing process between you work? Well, <clears throat> let's see. Well, for every song, it's usually different, you know? Sometimes we'll get together with um, whoever we're writing with, and we'll all get together and just work away for hours at a time. And other times, um, you know, our producer will have a great track, and he'll say, you know, really, I'd love it if you'd work on it. So we'd go home, and we'll all write lyrics and melodies to it. 
and then we'll come back and we'll have a you know a finished song. You had such amazing success with the first album. Do you feel a little intimidated by that? <laughs> Um, you know, it, there's very high expectations for the second album, and we're lucky because we had um, we had the opportunity to do a lot of writing, you know, in the past five years. Mm -hmm. So we have a few songs ready to go for the second album. Yeah. So That's we feel good. like Head we have start. a good start, yeah. you know? Yeah. I that think we're more good. excited to do the second album than yeah. anything. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. We get to do everything that we didn't get to do for right. the first for one. For the first one, right. Yeah. Or that you feel like, oh, I just wish I... Yeah. Right, exactly. Right. <laughs> I think everybody experiences yeah. that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Okay, we have Andy who's calling us from Lawrenceville, Illinois. Andy, you are on right now with Wilson Phillips. Go ahead. Hi. 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 I'd just like to say, Connie, I think you're beautiful. Oh, thank you. And I think you have the greatest voice. Thank you very much. And my question is, have any of you ever been approached about a solo career in the future? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> a singing career? No. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Have you thought of doing more acting, China? Is that something? That's yeah, really definitely. Future? I definitely want to do some acting later on. Already, you, she's been. Did, you did the Pulitzer Prize and right. Did things. some TV movies before. In the past. Before we signed our contracts, I remember right before is when I did the Pulitzer movie. And that, boy, that was an incredible time for you all the way around. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, we have from Wichita, Kansas. Michelle is waiting anxiously, I'm sure, to speak with Michelle. With to Michelle Phillips. <gasps> with Wilson Phillips. Oh. <laughs> Michelle, what's your question? Hi. 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 Um, I want to know, um, what inspired you to write Hold On and You're in Love? Well, um, Hold On <coughs> was inspired by, um, by sort of a situation I was going through in my own life, sort of, um, a personal kind of a situation and um, I was having a really difficult time so I decided to write about it and um, it was either that I was going to um, either I was just going to give up or I was going to get up and go on and um, obviously getting up and going on is always the better choice so I wrote about it and what about you're in love? She asked. I'm so glad about. Mm -hmm. Well, you like the song? <laughs> well, you were talking about <laughs> humming. You're in love. Who, who would really sing that? You're in love. Uh, that makes me so happy. It's a rare concept to be Very so rare. forgiving. Glenn Ballard's idea. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn wrote the chorus to "You're in Love," and it's just very. It's rare, you know, that you're happy for someone if they're, if they're in love with somebody else, you know. But um, that's definitely true love. Yeah, <laughs> that is true that's love. Sure. Way to <laughs> look at sure. it. Yeah. We got another California call on the line right now, Barstow. In fact, to be specific with Tony. Tony, it is your turn. Go ahead. Oh, good. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, I'm so excited. You guys are great. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I just first of all, I just like to say, you are like my inspiration to my singing, and I like ho hope to follow your footsteps and hopefully in a career. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Good luck. Believe in yourself. What's your question, Tony? Oh uh, yeah. Um, how how much control over your career decisions do y'all have? A lot. Yeah. A lot of We're control. lucky. <laughs> like 80%. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Actually, you know, probably even a little more than that. Yeah. Because, you know, when it gets right down to it, it's what we want, you know. It's and true. Um, we, <laughs> sometimes we get a little, you know, I mean, we're kind of spoiled in that way. We, 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 we like things to be done the way we see them because we've had a vision from day one. And, you know, we, we try and stay true to that vision. And if something um, doesn't feel right, we just won't do it. So we do have a lot of control. But we do do a lot of things that we don't feel like doing. Like, you don't, That's you right. Know, you don't feel like going to a radio station all the time or, you know, the sixth one that day. Right. But, um, you know, there, th there are some things, things that we don't have control That's all over. part of the plan. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I think that we have time for one more tele telephone call from Melbourne, Florida. And it is Hante on the line. Hante, go ahead. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, good. Hi, how are you? Um, I just wanted to say that I think you're all very attractive and talented, and I love all your songs. Go ahead, Hante. Okay. We got like 45 seconds <laughs> left. What's your question? No, forget the question. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I understand your parents are really close, and I was wondering how they met. <laughs> huh? Well... <laughs> They used to play basketball. That's in 20 seconds, please, Wendy. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, I don't know how they yeah, met. They, they, they used, used to play basketball, play basketball together at the park. And well, actually, they met through the business. Yeah, right. through the business. first through the business. And then our, our fathers loved basketball. to play basketball, mm -hmm. so they used to play basketball together. And then our mothers had us. Would, had us, and <laughs> so they would bring their little carriages to the park and watch the husbands play basketball. Yep. And that's and how the picture friends. of you guys inside the album is so unbelievably <laughs> cute. Isn't, isn't it, Grace? Thank you. We had, wait. 
chops. 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 <laughs> woo woo. Woo woo and Carnzo. Carnzo. Wilson Phillips, collectively known as, on Rockline on MTV. And we're here every week taking your calls live on the air. Please join me next week when my guests will be Vernon Reed and Corey Glover of Living Color will be here. Right. So we'll see you then. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you, you Martha. Thank, thank you. Wilson. Thank you, callers. Thank you. Infect and spray.